Now, you're going to find when you look at older horses, when you put your head on the horse's knee and you get you a parallel or a good straight line parallel with a bony column, you're going to find some problems. Now, we can say the farrier did that. Well, it's possible. It could be the horse owner or whoever was trimming him didn't trim him correct. And I'm going to show you a yearling a little later on, two yearlings hooves, and I'll show you how one got out and one didn't off the same horse. Okay, and these are problems we have found out. Now, what you are learning, gang, here is something you're not going to find in books today because most of your books, well, not most, all your books with their exception to the ones we have here are so far out of date because they're still chewing or trimming like they did 300 years or 200 years ago. We haven't come too far. So when we started running, and I'm going to show you some things that we do here that is different. We started experimenting. First, let's take a look at a horse running on a treadmill. And you can see the horse as he's trucking along there. And once he gets stable on the treadmill, we film that. And while we're filming it, we sit there and document it. And we can go back and look at it slow motion, frame by frame, however we want to look at it. But we wasn't satisfied we'd go out on a track. And there on the track, you can see we have some old Georgia chirp there. And once we rake that and we take the horse and get him in a good straight line down that track, then we can document the depth of each foot with different shoes or different trickery devices. And we can find out exactly what the horse is doing that he shouldn't do or what he should do if the foot is correct. So all of this is very important, and we have a lot of equipment here. Of course, we're like every other place. We need more, and we're constantly learning all the time. So we're constantly changing, but we have the technology today to go much farther. And you're going to see me use some equipment today that you probably never saw your farrier use, and you'll see that when we do get out on the pad. Now, as I'm holding this next chart up, I'm going to show you what happens when you don't or you get a foot out. In other words, he's not like he was the day he was born. We've got his foot completely out. Now, remember, a horse is just like you and I. Your conformation dictates how your foot strikes the ground. Horse is the same. He doesn't hit flat. And so if you look at your own feet, you can change your feet, and you can become cow-hawked, Toed in or, uh, well, towed out, but the horse industry would call it cow hop. And you can change your conformation around to see how it was you break over and how you land on one heel or the other. However, your conformation dictates that. Well, in looking at this, let's look, take a look at exactly what happens. Now, one of the things I recommend my students, and you're going to probably laugh at this, is I always recommend them going to the mall and take some juicy fruit chewing gum and throw pieces out there and let people step on it and see how it changes and alters their motion. You will be shocked. Because a lot of the fairies, when I first got into the research, they used to tell me, well, Ralph, the horse doesn't have any feeling in his hoof that you nail in. No, but the nerve ends that attach to it are so sensitive, just like you and I, when we got a half inch or so of shoe or a tennis shoe or anything on and we step on a piece of chewing gum, even though it squashes, it will, you, your mind picks up on it and it alters your motion. So the thing we have to remember, the mind of the horse is what operates his feet. Okay, in other words, just because we're sitting on it with a saddle and some reins, we're not actually altering his motion like we think. He's going to still do the same thing if we've got him in a straight line or if we're turning him, whatever. He's going to be out to do the same basic things unless something's wrong with it. But once we get the horse out, these are things our camera sees, that when the horse gets so far out or something is wrong, and there could be many things wrong, and this is what's going to really fascinates you because it can be many other things other than a horse's foot or the farrier. Now, if a horse is stumbling, something is wrong. Well, you say occasionally, I might stumble. That's true. You can step on a pebble or something. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong. But if you're constantly stumbling, something is wrong somewhere. Okay? Now, if you're overreaching, overreaching is when the hind foot 
on the toe catches the bulbs back here, and that's called, it can be a little higher or be a little low, that's called overreaching. Elbow hitting, forging, which is a common problem, and that's when the hind foot, the toe of the hind foot strikes somewhere on the bottom of the front foot on the same side before it gets out of the way. Now, if he's reaching over the opposite side, we call that cross-firing. So this is a common problem. And if it's constant, there's something wrong. And we'll get into the something wrong in a moment. Then we got cross-firing, scalping. Scalping is the front foot. Here's the front, if you can see it with a good close-up. And the toe striking the hind. This is your hind striking somewhere, anywhere up this leg. And we call that scalping. And the most, all the rest of it is things that we didn't mention. It's any type of interfering. But most of it's going to be covered here. The most dangerous part, and this is the part that we're going to really get into a lot, that you don't make this mistake, speed cutting. And I'm going to talk quite a bit. 